So good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here in Helsinki uh, once again, uh, and now in this new capacity to present um, our research and innovation policies and priorities and uh, uh, following, um, I think, the very good presentation by Signe, say a few words on where we stand uh, with the discussions on Horizon Europe. The objective for the Commission, uh, I think the objective of the research and innovation communities in member states, and I expect here as well, is to see a lot of progress on the Horizon Europe proposal before the next European Parliament election. Why? Because we will need um, uh, then quite some time to prepare the ground to be ready to go on the 1st of January 2021 when Horizon Europe kicks in with a new budget and uh, succeeds to Horizon 2020. Why uh, time? Because there is a lot of work which will be needed to revisit the partnerships. There will also be work needed with you to define the future missions, which Signum mentioned already. And I also expect that um, the new approach which we took to collaborative research and to Pillar 2, uh, the approach to work across the priority clusters, will also require a rather significant investment of uh, administrations and stakeholders in a process that we have labeled strategic planning uh, to be ready uh, to decide on the key priorities to be then rolled out as of uh, 21. So there is um, a pressure on council and parliament, they have put pressure on themselves to advance rapidly in the negotiations and we have today the perspective that by the end of November uh, we would have a position on the side of the parliament and uh, at the Compact Council on the 30th of November, the Austrian Presidency also hopes to have um, a position from the Council on the framework program. If that was the case, the two institutions could then engage uh, in a trilogue process uh, at the beginning of 2019, uh, and I would then hope that uh, significant progress can then take place until um, the Parliament uh, ends its mandate. Uh, allowing a large degree on con of convergence, possibly even an agreement on Horizon Europe, but at least a large degree of convergence, which then creates a very solid basis for the preparations which I explained to then take place. We had uh, last Friday um, a, a Council of Ministers meeting. Um, some of you uh, might be aware of that, uh, where ministers discussed... Um, now for the, for the second time uh, Horizon Europe, or well, in fact for the third time uh, Horizon Europe, there was a, a first broad presentation in June, then there was an informal council which met in Vienna in July, but it's the first time that they really went into the, the substance um, to, to find um, consensus uh, among ministers to move forward. The subjects were on the one hand very institutional, uh, but on the other one, on the other hand, we also had very political subjects. Um, the most institutional one was the issue of, a, of the legal base on which uh, uh, to base uh, the specific program um, uh, of Horizon Europe. Uh, I don't know in how far you're following that. If I look at the room now reacting to the word legal base, I have six or seven n n legal nerds nodding <laughs> with me, um, and the rest uh, probably uh, less. Um, I, just one word, nevertheless, it's an important matter. Uh, because it um, uh, then, of course, entails with it um, the respective role of the Council and of the Parliament. So it's in institutionally very sensitive. Uh, the Commission uh, recommended um, in the proposal to base the specific programme both on the research legal base in the treaty, but also on the industry legal base in the treaty. Why? because the specific program this time round also includes the European Innovation Council, which is of course a very deep research and innovation dimension, but beyond research and development also uh, tackles um, developments of innovation and competitiveness. The same goes for the European Institute of Technology, the famous EIT, which is also now included in that specific program. For these reasons, our legal service, our lawyers, recommended or, 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 or asked that the program is based both on research and on industry. Now that creates quite some commotion with your administration, including here in Finland, uh, but across all member states. Firstly, because um, our interlocutors um, are concerned uh, for most of them with this drift away from research and development into a broader set of objectives. I mean, here the view of the Commission is that the legal base reflects the content of the program 
and the legal base does not generate the program. And I think there is a broad degree of consensus with these same interlocutors that working with the EIT and the EIC makes a lot of sense. Secondly, the issue of the legal base is an issue of, of power. Who decides? Uh, and uh, on the basis of the industry legal base, it is co-decision. So council and parliament will co-decide on the specific program. If we were to have only a single legal base, which is the research legal base in the treaty, that's a special uh, legislative procedure where the council decides with only an opinion from the parliament. So there's a very deep institutional dimension to the discussion. And um, what happened on Friday, is uh, is not unexpected. It is that there is a very broad consensus of, of member states saying we should decide uh, on uh, on on the specific program, uh, and therefore uh, the council uh, recommend w will in 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 good time recommend a single legal base. What we I think have avoided um, on Friday is that the council immediately goes to the European Parliament to try to solve the issue of the legal base. And that was for, for, for the Commission very important because, um, in fact, the, the, the issue is should, should the Council now go to the Parliament just on the issue of the legal base or should the Council complete its work and then discuss with the European Parliament on a broader basis with a number of other elements to be agreed between the two institutions with the help of the Commission across the specific programme. The argument which we made, um, which Carlos uh, Moedas uh, made in the meeting itself, which was public, maybe some of you um, saw it on, on internet, uh, was don't engage with the Parliament on just one issue. One issue where essentially the Council would say to the Parliament, well up to now we decided alone, now because of the Commission proposal we have to decide together, do you agree that in the end we decide alone? Well, I think the answer is pretty straightforward, um, and I think we have avoided that step at this stage, which will allow um, both the, the Council to continue to work, but of course also the Parliament uh, being aware of these developments, including because uh, members of the European Parliament attended a lunch with ministers, will allow both institutions now to continue to work. So it was quite, quite an important discussion, even if very legalistic and very institutional. What we also discussed was uh, one very um, substantial point, which is the balance to be found in the program uh, between um, widening, so ensuring that all member states uh, have um, the perspective of developing a robust research and innovation uh, system and landscape. It's a challenge across all member states. Uh, I, I just, I mean, the Director General just told us that even in Finland you are being challenged with a, with a trend which was not positive over the recent years, but now the perspective to grow up again to 4%. Of course, you're starting from a very strong basis. You have many member states which um, over the last 10 years uh, have indeed uh, aimed at improving both the structure but also the, the impact of their research and innovation investment. But a lot more remains to be done. And as a result of that, they are also uh, participating to a more limited extent in Horizon Europe. So that's a quite a, a, a substantial political discussion between member states. You're well aware of it. In fact, the, the discussion between excellence on the one hand and widening on the other hand. One which was um, a quite, a, quite a deep division when Horizon Europe was, uh, Horizon 2020 was agreed a few years uh, back. I think this time round, of course, the discussion still is there, but it was a much more um, open discussion between uh, member states uh, last week. And I would argue that all member states are keen to ensure that collectively uh, we improve on our research and innovation investment. I think uh, for the Commission it is clear that all measures you, you would include in Horizon Europe to support the development of these national systems should be part of the widening part of the programme. And that for, for the rest of the implementation, of course, the driving principle is and will remain excellence. But that was also quite a substantial discussion and more work will take place on that. And lastly, and maybe most interestingly for you this morning, uh, ministers also uh, spend quite a bit of time to discuss how they want to implement Horizon Europe. And here the discussion is around the strategic planning process, which the Commission put forward in the proposal. We have, in fact, three steps. We have now the discussion on the legal base itself, the programme, the framework programme, and the specific programme, uh, which, uh, as I said, I hope will, will progress quite a bit in the coming months and will be the, the legal framework of uh, research investment in Europe. Then the Commission proposes to, to roll out a strategic planning process 
of course with national administrations, certainly also with input from members of the parliament, but also particularly a process to be run with stakeholders. The purpose of the strategic planning is to create uh, the bridge between the legal text and the future work programs in, in three respects. Firstly, on defining the detailed content of the future missions. Secondly, to prepare uh, the rollout of partnerships, whatever forms they will take. And thirdly, uh, to provide uh, a guidance and a, and a strong basis for the work programs in delivering the cross-cutting nature of uh, Pillar 2. So it is a very substantial process, much more than was the case up to now. The strategic planning exists already today, uh, but it's an internal document of the Commission, available, of course, to stakeholders, but an internal document of the Commission, whereas tomorrow uh, we want to make this um, a process of co-creation with national administrations and with stakeholders. Now, the discussion in the Council was not an easy one because, of its, because this is a very meaningful step and Member States are extremely keen to be largely uh, at the outset of the strategic planning process. So we discussed um, throughout the summer and now uh, conclusively on Friday how to do that. And the decision taken in the Council is, is I think, quite straightforward. Firstly, uh, the Ministers uh, decided that they want uh, that missions and partnerships are not identified in the strategic planning only, but that they are already part of the legal text. So ministers will want to identify the key areas for missions and will want to identify the key partnerships for the future. And then put those uh, items, if you want, in an annex to the uh, Horizon Europe legal base. We expect similar developments on the side of the European Parliament. So the process in the coming eight months uh, is going to be to identify a, a limited set of missions and also to identify the key partnerships which we want to find in the legal base. I think it, it does make sense politically because of the importance of these uh, two sets of items. And it does allow also full political ownership on the side of the European Parliament and on the side of the uh, Research uh, Council. The process now is that um, uh, Carlos Moedas and the Austrian Minister Heinz Fassmann will invite for lunch on the 15th of October. Um, ministers will be invited. I very much hope that Finland will be represented at ministerial level uh, on the basis of a contribution from the Commission which is still in the making and which then will be the basis for a first, uh, an, an initial, very first ministerial discussion. So we start the discussion not at technical level, but first at this uh, political level. I then expect that in the Council this will be very intense work um, until the end of November, with in principle, in the context of the planning now, a decision by the end of November on the Council side. Similar work will take place in the European Parliament, and then in trilogue the two institutions uh, would then aim at, um, at agreeing and converging on uh, respective priorities on partnerships and missions. And this is going to be a, a, a challenging process, I can tell you, no doubt about that, you can imagine it, I'm sure. Ideas are, are plentiful and all, and very good ideas on missions, I must say. Um, I mean, Signe explained what it is, um, and it has attracted a lot, of, uh, a lot of interest and a lot of engagement, including from stakeholders. I must say, uh, I'm, I'm, it's very, very impressive here in Finland, uh, from many quarters, the administration, um, I think Business Finland also had ideas, the Academy of Finland uh, recommended also missions, and, 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 and the Finnish contributions are diverse, huh? it, they don't converge entirely, so multiply this by 28. Uh, so that's where we are today, in the Commission we are right now discussing it as well, as I said, and there will be a meeting of commissioners this week, um, uh, chaired by Jerki Katainen, uh, with Carlos Moedas, and they will uh, hopefully be able to table a, a recommendation to, to, to ministers for, for the 15th of October, hopefully in the form of a limited number of missions. Why do I say limited number of missions? Because I think there is, on the one hand, uh, with member states um, and generally a great interest and many ideas, but at the same time, there's also a bit of a concern that missions will become overriding in the program. And there was also, in the discussions with ministers, a lot of um, interest that collaborative, traditional collaborative research, the one many of you are engaged in, 
at all levels of technology readiness levels should also be uh, promoted and ideally prioritized in uh, Horizon Europe and in Pillar 2. So expect a, a lively discussion, including on partnerships and on the continuation or, or the change of the existing partnerships. Uh, here again, very interesting politically. Member states tell us, Finland amongst the first, you need to rationalize the landscape of partnerships. Too many partnerships. And I think you're all right, absolutely correct. And then I'm looking to member states asking them, so which ones do we discontinue? And there is it's a bit of a, of, of a more silent reaction. So I think we now need to work through, through the motions and, and I think the issue is going to really revisit many of them, streamline them, maybe combine them. And so we will start with the most visible one, the famous institutional partnerships, those based on the treaty, for example, uh, Clean Skies or um, the Fuel Cells Joint Undertaking or Excel. But we will go through all the nearly 100, I understand, partnerships uh, which have been uh, developed uh, uh, with you uh, over the years and hopefully then have a, a more rational uh, set of partnerships. Again, missions and partnerships should not crowd out collaborative research. And in reality, missions, partnerships and collaborative research all aim at creating uh, synergies and links across uh, member states, across policy areas, and span from research into innovation, dissemination, and sometimes even into public policy. So I don't make such a stark distinction between the three types of, um, of, of research endeavors, but clearly um, uh, they, they will need to be properly articulated. I finish with one last point before I hope a live, um, expect a lively discussion with Signa, which is on the European Innovation Council. This was not discussed uh, this week um, in the Council of Ministers. It's being discussed at the technical level quite intensely, um, including with um, input from Business Finland, which does not completely agree with me, I'm afraid, uh, and with Carlos Moedas, but uh, that's a good discussion to be had. I'm sure we'll, we'll kick it off um, uh, again this morning. Um, so the work is, is ongoing, but the main point which uh, I want you to be aware of is that uh, the European Innovation Council, and in particular the famous accelerator, uh, this part of the Innovation Council which is meant to support disruptive innovation, was discussed by leaders uh, in Sofia in May, then in June, on the basis including of a contribution from the Finnish Prime Minister, which I must say I really very much welcomed. Because uh, initially the discussion was very much the Commission looking at it, France and Germany looking at it, and that is, is too narrow. And, and, and having also contribution from Finland was really, uh, I think, particularly um, important and welcome politically. And in fact, all contributions went into the same direction, huh? that we are not yet equipped in Europe to support a deep tech disruptive innovation. So that's what the accelerator is about. The features uh, are being um, discussed now on the basis of Horizon Europe, but not all the details are there. And this is why the European Council in June asked the Commission to launch a pilot of the accelerator. So we are working on that now in, in the teams in Brussels. And we will come forward with, um, with first papers uh, still in October, early November. I mean, my, my colleagues already went to the committees, the SME committee and the program committee with first ideas, but there will be papers shortly in November. The idea is to launch a call for proposal on disruptive innovation in the first quarter of 2019. So, so watch that space and help us fill it. This is, um, as Signa said, the, the, the greatest novelty of, uh, of Horizon Europe and one where, where Europe um, really needs to up its game uh, to ensure that what we do so well on, on early innovation, we can also then bring to the market across, across the board. Thank you.